Hey, what is up, everybody? I am your host, Rob Younce, and thank you for tuning back into the Kane Cash Show. If today is your first episode, you're in for a good one. If you've been with us before, we really appreciate you coming back. Either way, today's guest is a Canes alum and a first round draft pick in the 2014 MLB draft. But before we get into that, I'd like to ask a favor of you. Please help us grow this show. How can you do that? Well, first, give us a like, smash that like button, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast host, smash that like button. Two, drop us a comment. Let us know what you like or you don't like about our show. Three, help us grow our community by subscribing. This lets others know that this show is legit. Four, show us some love with a review. Or five, share it. Send this to your friends and enemies who are missing baseball right now. Today's guest is none other than A's pitcher and Canes alum, Grant Holmes. Also joining Grant, we have Canes pitching coach, Jamie Evans. You can listen to Jamie and Grant talk about his baseball journey, including joining the Canes and his nerves on draft day. Grant was the first Canes arm to hit 100 miles an hour, and that was six years ago. In addition to being super talented, Grant is humble, faithful, and focused. So whether you're a hitter in the batter's box or a deer in the woods, you better watch out because Grant is coming after you. Let's get to it. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rob Yance again with another edition of Canecast Show. Where today we have two studs on, two guys that uh, great history, uh, not only with the Canes, but great history with me, two great guys. Uh, we have Jamie Evans. How you doing, Jamie? How things going? I'm, I'm doing great. Just living the COVID life right now. <laughs> I hear you, man. That's Hey, that's 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 all we can do right now, right? I, yeah, I, I see you actually got air now, man. It's looking good. Yeah, yeah. That, I don't know about all that. That's that's the COVID <laughs> hair and the COVID beard. Right, right. Well, and then and then the 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 real dude here is uh is oh Grant Holmes down there. How are you doing, Grant? Gee, can you doing hear good. me, man? Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah. I did, talk talk about COVID here. I mean, I know you got the flowing locks and everything, but that thing's getting uh, that thing's getting long, bud. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I can't I can't tell you the last time I got it cut. Oh goodness, yeah, man, I had that problem too. So I, I get it. I mean, that's that's why Jeff's coming on tonight. We didn't. Uh, that's why Jeff's not coming on tonight because he didn't want to want you to show us up like that. I, I'm taking the loss for us. So. <laughs> 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 so so Grant you know yeah. uh Grant you're with the uh, Oakland A's and and um you know we've got Jamie on and want to want to get into both y'all's relationship a little bit you know how you met and and uh so so Grant tell us a little bit about where you grew up and and let's start there like how how did it start out with baseball for you you know when you were a kid and you know your family and things like that bring us up to speed on that if you would um I grew up in uh Conway South Carolina uh brother played baseball um, grew up at the field um, everywhere he went for like a, a baseball tournament I was there um, so I, I kind of like grew up around it and it was pretty much my life was living I guess through him um, right uh, my uh, great-grandfather played I think he played in the um, mill league um, I think that my dad played a little bit of ball but I think he's more of a football player. So uh, me and Colby were, were the two, I guess, yeah, bigger bigger ball players of the family. Yeah, yeah, that turned out pretty well for both of you. Both of you pretty darn good. Um, <laughs> uh, in case people don't know, you know, you're a pitcher with the Oakland A's um, in the A's organization. Uh, have you always been a pitcher? Were you a hitter? I mean, tell me, tell me how that evolved a little bit. Um. I'd, li I'd like to call myself a hitter. I uh, used to. Um, I loved hitting. Um, yeah. Probably didn't have the best swing, but I uh, I made contact with the ball. Um, played I played a little bit of outfield. I liked outfield. Um, best part about that is just throwing people out, I guess, showing off my arm strength. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've always always had an arm, man. I, I remember you when you first came to the Canes, uh, you know, just sitting back and, and, and listening to 
to the ball sizzle through the air and uh, and and watching you work, man. It was really super impressive. Um, so Jamie, let's 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 bring it to you. Ha- tell me a little bit about how you got hooked up with Grant. Well, well, let's actually take it back a little further. Let's let's talk about um, you know how you got involved with the Canes and uh, um, you know arm care program things like that. Well, it originated uh, with Jeff Petty walking into my indoor facility in Del Mar, Maryland, I don't know, a long time ago. And uh, he strolls in there to do this event to with Perfect Game as a scout and kind of helping a guy out. And he walks up to me and is like, hey, whose facility is this? And I said, it's mine. He's like, this is a beautiful facility. I was like, thank you. He goes, are we going to have any dudes here? I said, yeah, there's two dudes. I said, but I know right now there's two dudes. Uh, one of those was Derek Gibson, who made it all the way up to AAA with the Red Sox and some, some other uh, organizations. And the other one was Tyler Webb, who is in the big leagues right now um, with the uh, St. Louis Cardinals left-handed pitcher. So <clears throat> he watched both of them perform. And uh, afterwards, like, man, you're pretty good at this. I'm like, thanks. I appreciate that. You know, who are you to be telling me I'm good at this? Like, <laughs> thanks anyway. Um, and then we just hit it off. So we started chit-chatting. And then uh, that summer, uh, he called me and said, hey, I need a pitching coach down here at the Perfect Game World Series. Uh, do you mind rolling down here? I'm like, yeah, when is it? He said, you need to fly out tomorrow. I don't have one. I'm like, huh? He goes, seriously, I think we got a chance to win a national championship. I'm like, you're crazy. That, that, the tournament's huge. You're crazy. He says, really, I think we got a chance to win it. So, you know, at the time I was dating my wife, I'm like, hey, I'm going to jump on a plane. And she's like, hey, it is what it is. So I jump on a plane, go down there. And uh, seven days later, I'm uh, walking out with a size uh, 12 ring. Uh, <laughs> Cross my finger and the Canes first national championship. And then it's been uh, been with the Canes ever since then. So uh, I had a very uh, fortunate start, but uh, um, has have been there through the uh, – uh, I would say the growth of the Canes and the explosion and and the guy that's standing right there, Grant Holmes, was, you know, one of the reasons uh, that we did explode because uh, he was such a high-profile player. And if you want to, we can get into uh, how we recruited him. That's an interesting story as well. Yes, definitely want to get into that. I want to get into that. Okay. First, <laughs> first let, me, let me say something about Grant as a hitter. I would mm-hmm. probably term it more as a hacker. <laughs> it wasn't pretty. He got in there and hacked like crazy. Uh, when everything lined up, good grief. <laughs> they went forever. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say it lined up as much hitting as it did on the mound. Let's just put it that way. That's on correct. Mound, lined up a, on the mound, it lined up a lot more. Right. Um, but, uh, shoot, what year was that, Grant, when you were uh, – the that you played with the Canes? 2013. 13? 13? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting old. I know, the, right? The, yeah. So it was the uh, fall of 12, 2012, like I think October, November. Jeff gives me a buzz and says, hey, man, I got this guy down in South Carolina um, that could be a really, you know, big program changer for us to take us to the next level. I'm like, okay, great. So Jeff had asked me to talk to some kids on the phone before. So I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll talk to him. And he goes, uh, no, we ain't talking to him. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, we're going to go down and meet him. I said, we're going to go meet him? He's like, yeah. I was like, when are we going? He says, we got to go tomorrow. I was like, here we go again, Jeff. You don't give nobody no notice for nothing. Get in the car. So now, for, for people who don't know, I live in Maryland. Grant's right outside Myrtle Beach. That's not across the street. That was an eight-hour drive. Eight and a piece, actually. Right. So I uh, I talked to my pastor who uh, who's been a part of the Canes program, uh, Pastor Cropper Bill Cropper. Um, his son played in the program, and I'm like, look, I need I need a riding buddy. I ain't trying to do a a 16 hour turnaround, you know, eight hours down or eight plus hours down, eight plus hours back right. by myself. He's like, all right, come on, jump in. So off we go. Uh, meet Jeff about halfway down. Jump in the car, get down there. Come to find out, his dad was a pastor. Didn't even know that. And we got our pastor in the car, in the car with me. So uh, those two go off and start talking, you know, religious stuff and pastor things. And uh, Grant and I are sitting there talking baseball with Jeff. And, and then uh, 
we found out who the boss was because then uh, Grant's mama came over and sat down. <laughs> and right. uh, Grant's mama asked all the good questions, the questions that mamas ask. Are you going to take care of my baby? And, you know, I looked up and said, yeah, we're going to take care of him. I can promise you that, you know, safety for Kay's kids is always priority number one. And then, you know, she's like, you know, what's your plans for him? I'm like, your son's a donkey. We're going to use him like a donkey. Anytime there's a big one, he's going to get out there and throw it. And that's what Grant did. So um, when we were done, Jeff goes, I think that went real well. I think that went real well. I said, I think so, too. He goes, be great if we could get him. And I think it was the next day after uh, Grant had some time to spend with his mom and dad and uh, answer some questions, or it might have even been that night on the way home and they had a chance to pray a little bit about it. Uh, Jeff's phone rang and Grant decided that he wanted to be a cane. And, you know, that was a huge celebration. We were like, hey, man, we just got a first round pick. That's huge. That's huge. And, and then, you know, because of Grant's uh, willingness to, to come on with us and trust us, we were able to uh, – to another level with the Kings. Uh, Absolutely. In great shape at the time. And then we went to another level. And then obviously each year has progressively gotten better with the draft picks. But, you know, Grant was one of the early adopters that uh, helped that happen. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I remember, I, I, I think, I, I remember the text and I, th I don't think I got it until Monday, but just letting us, you know, letting everybody know that, uh, that Grant was going to be part of the program and, you know, it, it really was a big deal, and I don't know, Grant, if you you know that, but it it was a big deal when when you came on board. Um, you know, it, it and it was interesting. Um, you know, it's interesting looking back at it now because I know your your dad has been, you know, has come to different events as as pastor for Jeff's team and and coming to deliver messages and things like that. Um, tell me, how was it? You know, you're growing up in right outside of Myrtle Beach and. And, you know, dad's a pastor. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about your faith and, and how that's helped you on your journey. Um, you know, it's, that's, that's the reason I'm here, you know. Um, without that, uh, I, don't, I don't foresee myself getting as far as I have because um, the world's, world's crazy. Um, but, Absolutely. yeah, um, having, having my dad like he is, and his faith um, just, I guess, was a stepping stone for me to to how how to act and like how to go about life and things of that nature. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, um, faith is yeah, and, and and you know what, and and it, that's a big part of this, you know. And you'll you'll realize it when you become a dad. And you know, Jamie, you're very fortunate to be a father. Um, you know, that's what we want for our family. That's what we want for our children is to be able to, to impart our values. And, and, you know, when, when you get into situations as you're, uh, as you're out of the nest, so to speak, um, you know, we, we all hope that our children will act appropriately and given, um, you know, and, and, and just the right guidance and have, have given, there we go. That's Look hitting there. me right there. He, he saw me on TV <laughs> and said, let me jump on dad. So, it was kind of a perfect time. <laughs> Sorry about that. Say hi, Greg. Absolutely. Thanks. Perfect. Time. Yeah. What's up, guys? <laughs> but, you know, Grant, so it, it, it is. It's, it, I, I bring that up very early because I understand how important your faith is to you. And I understand, you know, we look to our faith when things are going well and when they're not going well. Um, you know, how has that – have there been times on the field um, – where you've brought that in maybe a little bit more, not necessarily in a, in a, a bad situation or in a, a situation, but where you really rely on your faith to, to get you through maybe a difficult time, maybe a struggle, maybe things like that. Are, are there times like that, Grant? Absolutely. Um, I think I'll probably, I'll probably pray more on the, like during baseball games than I do a normal, like, normal life um pray before every inning for my last pitch um in the dugout um for the game obviously and then after um but yeah I mean every every pitch is it's I I just put it in his hands you know um absolutely but yeah every absolutely. every after every warm-up pitch at the end of the inning I'll take my hat off and I'll do a little prayer and circle the mouth um so if you ever see me do that, that's that's what I'm doing. 
so we know what you're doing then, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's good. That's, you know what, and, and we hear a lot about, you know, how pro athletes conduct themselves and, 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 you know, people that, that are, um, show their faith more than others. Um, it's, it's very nice to see that. It's nice to see how you, how you pull that in and, and, and rely on it to, to get you through even the most mundane things and your appreciation for, uh, for your faith is, is, is super impressive. So you, you join the Canes and tell us a little bit about your time with the Canes. I think we kind of, we put the bat away at that point. I think I remember you throwing somebody out from right field. I think, did I remember that correctly? Did you ever get out in right field? I, uh, I, I did. I, did. I, get it. I hit it a little bit in the, uh, the, I guess they were called the pra- practice tournaments. Um, gotcha. I did more of the pitching in the, in the big tournaments. So, yeah. 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 I, I just, I think, I think I remember you hosing somebody from right field, but what I really remember about you is you're getting up on the hill and talk about your time, uh, I guess, with the Canes and how that's impacted you, you know, how that's, I guess, how that's helped develop you as a player. Um, I guess like since like Jeff and, uh, Jamie and, um, pastor came down and saw me there to meet me in Conway. It was kind of a shock. I was like, man, I have a, a travel team coming to meet with me to ask if I would play for their team. I was like, that's, that's kind of like college, you know? Um, so it was kind of like a shock and I was like, man, never had this before. So, I mean, something, something's good. Something good has to come out of this. Um, so yeah, I, decided to, to play with the, the Canes and man it was it was a good journey a lot of a lot of good talent um I, I I think we might have had 25 players and I think 24 of them were D1 athletes if I'm not mistaken maybe even all of them it was crazy I think we had 10 guys get drafted in the first 10 rounds or something like that um it was it was a good I guess it was a year and a half or so that I played, two years maybe. It was just lights out baseball, and I I I, I can remember maybe on one hand how many times we lost out of however many games we played, and it was just a winning atmosphere, and I don't I don't really remember losing to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, you guys were really good, man. You, you, and and Jamie put it correctly is that, you know, you, you're what, you know, we we were on a roll as far as Kane's organization, but man, you guys really jump started it, and like Jamie said, won our first. You know, when Jamie came on, won our first national championship. Um, Jamie, so what were your impressions of of Grant? I mean, other than the big donkey um, that he is. What well, what was your impression of his of his uh, his demeanor on the mound and his his presence in the dugout? Um, <clears throat> number one, I would say that you know back to the faith thing that he was talking about uh, with the Canes, we talk a whole lot about the fact that baseball is what we do, not who we are, and and Grant personifies that. Um, who he is is not baseball; it's just what he's been gifted with and what he does. Um, as far as him on field, he's a gamer. Um, you know, he's, he's the kind of kid that wants the ball uh, in any big situation to take the mound. And uh, there was times where, you know, his pitch count was getting to that point where, you know, we're going we're gonna to take him because we're not going to put a kid in jeopardy. And I'd walk out there and, you know, his flowing locks would look at me and say, I ain't coming out. And I'd look at him and say, yes, you are. And he said, I ain't coming out. And, you know, it's one of those things to – that I didn't want to get shown up at that time by a 16-year-old kid. So I turned around and walked back and said, you got one more hitter. Get him out. And then, uh, you know, he always did. And then when he got him out, I looked at him and said, you're not going back out there. I could do that in the dugout, but I didn't want to do that on the mound. So, uh, you know, he, 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 uh, he, he brought a, a, um, I don't know, a persona about him of professionalism. Um, someone who went about his work. Sorry, there's my three-year-old. It's here. okay, dude. It's, it happens. Hi, good. hi, Kai Kai. How are you, buddy? <laughs> uh, he's running around, running around a restaurant. I want to know why Daddy's not paying attention to him. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all um, right. He, he personifies the um, 
work ethic, um, and he he had a uh, he had a plan every day that he showed up to the park. Um, if he was scheduled to throw on Friday, Wednesday was going to be this, Thursday was going to be this, Friday pregame, and it never changed. Everything was the same. Um, you know, as as a pitching coach, you're like, all right, this kid's doing big league stuff at 16, and when you see that, you're like, all right, this is special. Not only is his arm special, not only is he mentally special, but his preparation is special, which, uh, you know, obviously I'm sure for him has changed when he got the pro, pro ball. Um, however, all that changed mm-hmm. was some of the things he did to, pre- did to prepare, not the actual preparation itself. And he already had that, which should have made his transition to pro ball much easier. Uh, and I think we've had some conversations about that in the past and, and it was easier for Grant because he had uh, done all those things leading up to it. And then from a coaching perspective, being able to see that um, and then go, all right, we need, to, we need to make sure the other kids follow this. And right. so he was kind of a trendsetter for the rest of that team and then the rest of all the other teams that followed because of his preparation. So, you know, um, we may have had him for two years, but Grant lives on in our program since then because of uh, seeing the way he goes about doing stuff transformed the way us coaches look to the way things need to be done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Grant, you didn't – I don't think you even realized the effect that you had. You know, it's not just what you do on the mound. It's all the other stuff. (laughs) And I'm sure as you – you know, as you get older, again, I I interviewed Bo Burrows the other day, and same thing. You guys are still kids to me, even though you're 23, 24, 25, 26-year-old men. I still see you, you know, as, as you were. But I, I'm assuming, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you got a little bit of that from Colby, from him, you know, kind of being ahead of you a little bit and, and showing you how to, you know, how to prepare and things like that. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, just seeing how, I guess, him playing travel ball, um, seeing other people as a young kid, I guess older, since he's six years older, I got to see that as a – I started when I was four, so I, I got to see that ever since I was a baby because we were at the field. He started when he was four, too, so he was two years into it when I was born, and it was just I got to see people that he played against and people that he played with and see what they did, and just a lot of it came from my dad, too. He helped um, just big preparers, I, sh- I should say. So, so let's turn this around, Grant. We've heard Jamie's opinion on you and, and what his impression was. You know, you've worked with Jamie for a while. You guys have been close. Um, tell me a little bit about your time with the Canes and working with Jamie and, and maybe even go a little bit further, you know, as you've, as you've gotten a little bit into pro ball. Tell me, tell me a little bit of relationship there. Um, I like Jamie. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, I guess I guess that was like really the first time I ever had like a, I guess a pitching coach I should say, because um, I played I played travel ball obviously, but they only had like you know the the head coach and like a base coach or whatever. Um, so you know having a, a pitching coach that that knew what he was doing and had um, I guess background in it and advice good advice to give I guess whenever you're struggling or whenever you're let's say just having a bad bullpen that can just uh say one thing and just turn it around you know um yeah he's just my time with the Canes and with Jamie was I'd say most likely the 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 biggest biggest stepping stone for me to to put myself where I did in the draft Um, because, I mean, we played against the best of the best and we had the best of the best on the team and the best coaches and the best staff. Um, I mean, we didn't have the, I guess, I think you guys have like a strength guy and stuff now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a little different, yeah. Yeah, we didn't didn't have any of that stuff, but um, we had the pitching and the the hitting and the, the head coach and stuff like that. And it was just a, a, an amazing stepping stone for my professional career. Awesome. 
Very cool. And you know what? It, it, it's neat because as we, you know, came together and then now, you know, everybody, you know, the Canes program's here and, and you're over here doing your thing. You know, the, the, the rise is the same. And, and I don't think, you know, you in particular realize you, you really were a big catalyst to where we are now. I know you're a quiet guy. You're humble. And, um, but, but you really did have a big impact on, on the Canes and, and where we are now. Um, it's, it's interesting to, to look back on it and, and remembering how important we thought it was, but looking back on it, as Jamie was saying, is how important it really, really is now. Because you, you know, we, we knew, you know, first round guy, uh, and you were, you were taking the first round, right? 2014 with the Dodgers. Yep. Um, tell us about that. Tell us a little bit about that because I'm, I don't know, um, I didn't hear too much of the story about, you know, where you were, what you were doing, and, and you know, we thought you were going to be a first rounder, but talk about that, that last high school season a little bit and what you were, you know, what you were feeling leading up to the draft. Um, I'd say I came out of the gates pretty hot that, that senior year. Um, the first two scrimmages, I think I, I raised my stock a little bit. Um, I think the first scrimmage I was – I think I, I topped it like 99. And then I, I, somehow my brother was still there for some reason. And he was, I guess he was reading the velos and stuff. And he was like, 99, is that all you got? And then I guess the <laughs> next week, next week he was still there. And first inning, I think two innings, I think it was a good soccer team. Um, first inning, I hit 99 again. And he was came up to me, he's like, is that all you got? And I was like, I don't know. Let's see. The next inning, I, uh, came out and uh I hit a hundred. Um so I think that I think that that number uh put me put me a little bit higher on the draft board. Um senior year uh, I was just I think I threw maybe forty innings. Um doesn't sound like a lot nowadays. Um through forty innings I think I threw in five or six games. Um, and you know it was it was kind of bittersweet because I I enjoyed high school ball, hanging out with friends. You know, because um, the team I played with, I they were friends of mine, and we did literally everything together. We hung out together, stayed at each other's houses, uh, went fishing together, everything. Um, and I also got to hit, and I was actually a pretty good hitter in high school. But I guess it was just the travel ball when you played against good competition where it got a little tough. Um, so, I mean, that that season was definitely a game changer um, in terms of, I guess, what, what I could um, put out performance-wise. So when the draft came around, were you nervous? I mean, what would you do the day of the draft? I was actually at the draft. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, Petty was there. Uh, mm-hmm. It was it was very very hectic. Um, getting told all these all these things uh, by the teams before you know if you're here this pick we're gonna take you. That pick rolls around they don't take you and you're like oh lord what's going on? Um, uh, I think it happened to t- two teams actually. Um, I won't I won't. Say their names, but um, say their names, but you got them written. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out of your hat. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it was very, very ner- nerve wracking um, because I don't, I don't want it to sound very, uh, I guess, boastful. But I, I didn't think I was going to have to wait that long to go in the twenty or twenty second mm-hmm. pick. Um, yeah. But like I said, it was it was a good day until. I had to to get dressed and go sit in the dugout in the MLB studio. That was very very hectic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I I can imagine. I, I I knew where you were. I just wanted to see if you'd talk about it. Um, Jamie, what kind of heat was he getting? I mean, again, I know the ninety nine and the hundred in the spring, and I know how hard he was throwing in the fall. You know what? What was it like with his outings uh, in the, uh, that that you heard about? You know what? What what were you hearing out there about about him? Yeah, I think we need to put a little bit into perspective. This was seven what seven years ago, eight years ago. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. hundred miles an hour for the high school kid. Right. You know, still today, a hundred miles an hour with a high school kid, you're like, oh wow, okay. Um, right. But this was seven or eight years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's funny with the pro game, you know, you've, you've got him going out there, you know, flashing 99, you know, popping 100 and, you know, hanging out in 96, 97, you know, just like he's playing catch. And pro scouts, I love him to death, but all of them find something wrong, even with the best of them. You know, and then, right. and then you know, you start hearing, well, he's a little undersized or, well, you know, his hair may be keeping him from throwing a little harder or, you know, all that facial hair. What kind of kid do you think he has with all the face? You know, pro scouts find all kinds of things to, uh, to, to kind of um, bring the kids down a notch or to, to, you know, not put them on that pedestal. I, I don't know if that's, you know, for other pro scouts to let them know they don't like them that much when really they love them or what. Right. But, you know, there was, <clears throat> there was a lot of teams that loved them. Um, you know, the one constant that kept coming up is he wasn't six foot four, you know. Um, but uh, Grant couldn't do anything about him being six foot four, uh, right. he couldn't make himself, he couldn't make himself grow and <laughs> and uh, get to be six foot four. Um, but he did everything to be a kid that could throw 100 miles an hour. And, and then the other thing is, is uh, he did everything physically to be able to support that. Um, you know, we're not getting a good, real good view of Grant here, but uh. He may not be six foot four tall, but his shoulders are six foot four wide. I mean, he's he's a wide wide shouldered kid. Uh, his legs yeah. are big, like tree trunks, you know. So you know he's put together to be able to uh, withstand the force that uh, 100 miles an hour uh, uh, arm, you know, has to to be able to withstand. So you know, obviously you were hearing all those knocks, and then you know as the draft was approaching, you know, it, it was it was a certainty that he was going to go in the first. Um, and then, uh, you know, through that process, I think there was a couple of teams that wanted to jump in and get them, but uh, the dollar figures weren't lining up uh, for them, you know, and where, where things were supposed to happen. So um, ultimately, you end up where you're supposed to be. And Grant ended up where we're supposed to be. Um, sometimes, you know, obviously, we look at the fact that, you know, it was 22nd, and he said, you know, I thought I was going to be taking 14 pies, such and such team. Well, that may be the case, but 20 seconds where you're supposed to end up because, yeah. you know, that's the plan that's, that's in place and that's where he got taken. And, you know, uh, I'm sure Grant got everything he wanted and more for that 20 second pick. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. That's right. That's right. And he, so he gets in the Dodgers system and Grant, you, you, you had a, and you, you're flying through the system and you still are. How old are you now? What are you? 24? 24. 24. Yeah, flying through the system, you're, you're, you know, what was, what were some of the biggest things you learned in, uh, so far in your, your, your pro career so far? What are some of the things that, you know, you take with you today, um, you know, that you learned so far? Uh, big one is consistency. Um, being able to go out every fifth day and throw five plus inning. Um, I mean, you can you can have a five ERA in the big leagues, and if you go out every fifth day and throw five plus innings, give your team give your team five six innings, then you're going to have a pretty good career. Um, consistency and and staying healthy, staying strong, is the two big ones that that I take from it. Um, yeah. Just taking one outing at a time, one bullpen at a time, and just. Staying on top of my arm care was was a big big thing for me. Um, as you know, I'm a high school kid. I uh, I didn't really do much arm care other than the the weighted balls, you know. Um, going in there and just the off season, you know, just having like a, a program to do and not having anybody to sit there and tell you to do it was was like a learning lesson for me. Um, so yeah, I guess staying staying consistent and staying healthy and strong. And that's yeah, big takeaways. Those, and and th those are great takeaways because I don't think enough people, uh, enough players, enough uh, enough of the younger guys really take that into in, into their plan. You know, again, we talk about it. Go it goes back for for me as a as a coach looking back as 
how you came into the program, having your plan and executing that plan every time out. You know, one of the things I've always noticed about you is how, you know, how grounded you are. And I attribute that to your faith and your family of being so wonderful. Um, but your demeanor and, and you know, you, you brought a sense of professionalism, as Jamie had touched on, to, to your job at the time. You know, coming in and, and throwing big games. And I don't think I ever saw you rattled. Am I right, Jamie? I mean, I, I don't remember him ever yeah, being rattled. No. I think, I think the most nervous you were was probably at the beginning of this, uh, of this conversation, getting on camera and having <laughs> – Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and being at the draft Absolutely. and having to get all dressed up, uh, having to get all dressed up. Yeah. <laughs> and I know, Absolutely. you know, you, you're 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 a, a great true boy, and I see all your stuff in the uh, in the off season, all your duck hunting and stuff like that. Tell us a little bit about that. You've been duck hunting since you were a kid. Tell tell me some more about that, because that's probably a good way that you relax a little bit, if I'm right. Yeah, um, big big duck and deer hunter. Um, uh, more, more, uh, deer than duck. Um, I mean, duck hunting, you have to wake up really, really early. Um, and sometimes I, I fall asleep a little late at night and I don't want to wake up that early to go maybe sit in the boat and kill two ducks, you know? So okay. I'm more of a deer hunter. Um, you can do that in the morning and the afternoon. Uh, but I, I've been, I guess I've been hunting since, I was probably 12 or 13, um, so probably so 10 or 12 years. Um, okay. It's it's one way for me to just to get out and, and I guess, enjoy nature. Um, just relax and, and you, 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 you aren't doing anything but waiting for a deer or a duck to, I guess, harvest, I should say, instead of kill. Um, it's just very very relaxing and it's one way just to get away from this crazy world that we're in and just sometimes take a nap just think you know think about what you what you want um think about your plans you know it's just one way for me to go out and clear my mind and just do what i love you know yeah absolutely way for you to get away and and you know, recenter at times, you know, as things are crazy all around us, you know, you, you need something, you have to have something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, baseball is that place, but sometimes that can be some of the stress that you're dealing with, you know, whether it's, you know, stress that others put on you, you know, a little bit of a burden there or a burden that you're carrying internally, um, you know, maybe you don't have the best outing or the best bullpen. You know, you talked about how Jamie, you know, really helped you, um, you know, from a bullpen to bullpen, from a, an outing to outing, and and it, it was neat. It's it's kind of like a, a deck of cards was shuffled. You have your you have your your uh, plan, which is the deck of cards, and then we bring Jamie and shuffle that in, and and now it's just another another other piece to help you get better. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about you know you're with the, with the Oakland A's uh, now, and tell me a little bit about some of the. Some of the uh, pitching coaches there, you know, are meshing with philosophies and things like that. Are you, you know, how how's, how things going in uh, through your journey in the uh, the Oakland A's organization? Really good. Um, I got I got traded over here, and wasn't really, I guess, taught how to pitch. Um, I was more taught, um, I guess, better mechanics and to just let your physical body do what it does. Um, but I got over here and learned, I guess you call it pitch tunneling. Um, never heard about it before. And I was like, man, that's, that sounds like it would work. It sounds efficient. Um, learned that with, uh, the pitching coach in Stockton, Steve Conley. Um, I actually had him last year in Midland again at the beginning of the season. And, you know, it's just the A's don't – they don't really – they ask you if you want to do things, if you feel comfortable doing it. Um, but if you don't want to do it, they're not going to pound it into you unless they see that it might harm you in your future or right. put you in a, in a, in a not-so-good position. Mm -hmm. But the A's and their pitching coaches, uh, they're really – I guess personal and 
they don't they don't say a lot unless you ask them to or you ask them a question. Um, they'll help you whenever you need help. Um, but yeah, I mean, it hasn't been much of a struggle with like, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that. It's been more of a, hey, just just do what you are capable of and you know just learn how to pitch is is one big thing that i've learned because i mean you can throw a 97 mile hour fastball somewhere in the zone and the higher you get if you leave it up it's it's gonna leave the yard um so learn how to throw that fastball up in the zone and throw something else off of it is, is something i've i've learned coming over here gotcha good and that's that's pretty neat and I've, I've heard from you know from from a couple of guys with the A's that I know that have have said similar things. So that's really neat. Jamie, you you were with the Blue Jays for a little while um, as their throwing dude. Um, Yep. (laughs) What what kind of things have you seen, you know, with Grant? And I know you guys talk every now and then. What what has been been your impression of his development? I mean, after he leaves, you know, uh, leaves South Carolina, uh, goes, you know, he was committed to Florida, obviously didn't go there, taken 22 overall. And what have you seen as far as his development through his journey so far? You know, for me, he's taken the steps that the normal baseball player has to take. Um, he He's hit a couple bumps in the road that you have to take. Um, you know, those are the things that uh, when you get to the big leagues, you're like, all right, look behind you and say, look at all that I've overcome. That's huge. Um, those are things that, that has to happen in the journey. And he's taken the journey that you're supposed to take. Um, you know, sometimes those kids that uh, get rushed through are the ones who don't stay long. He's, he's gone about it the correct way. The organizations that he's been with has gone about it the correct way, um, making sure that he has a career as opposed to throwing in the big leagues for a year or two. And, you know, ultimately that's, that's what the, the major league teams want they're investing all this time leading up to that. And ultimately, that's what Grant wants. He wants a career, something that he can stay there and, uh, you know, put, pitch in the big leagues for enough time that uh, he gets a part of that pension program because that pension program is nice, you know. So, uh, you know, that's the, he's done exactly uh, what needs to take place. And then, you know, uh, I expected this year would be the year that Grant made it to the big leagues. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have this pandemic and, you know, we don't know what baseball is going to do. I know there's lots of talks about different scenarios and stuff, but this is the year that I expected Grant to be in the big leagues because um, he's taken all the right steps and, and, you know, hit that bump in the road. So this was the year and, uh, you know, Grant was ready. Um, you know, he had spent the time in the off season getting prepared and, and uh, this was it. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, unfortunately, you know, he may have to wait a little longer um, than, he, than he expected or wanted to get to the big leagues. But, you know, it's, it's right around the future, uh, you know, right around the corner. It's in his near future. It's not like it's, you know, way down the road. He's, he's, he's right there ready to take that small step to get to the big leagues. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting that you say that um, about bumps in the road, because I think that, you know, in doing these cane casts, I've found that, you know, everybody has these bumps in the road and it's really on how you face them and how you handle them. You know, you just were basically calling that a learning experience. And it, what I've found is that the people that are very well grounded, they're humble, they're hardworking. When they hit those bumps in the road, it's not pull up chalks and get the heck out of Dodge. It's let's turn and face it. Let's use it as a learning experience and let's keep moving forward. And, you know, Grant and following your career, that's what I've seen out of you as well. And it's, it's refreshing to see. And I attribute it to being raised the right way, you know, your parents and, and family and, and the loved ones that you have around you, you're, you're recently married and, and, and that, and, and that building that family together the way that it is, 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 is a great way to handle things. I mean, would you, would you agree with that, Grant? Is that, that I mean, in, in times like that, how, do, how are you handling those things? Absolutely. I mean, obviously my, my first injury that I had with the A's, was the first injury I've ever had. And for it to come 
on a year where I was supposed to be in AAA, um, maybe even the big leagues that year, 2000. When was it? 18. Um, but you know what? It, uh, my shoulder, I guess it, it helped me learn to be who I am. Um, helped me learn to uh, take care of myself better. Um, routine. Um, even though I had a pretty good routine, um, it wasn't, I guess, it wasn't good enough. Um, so I've tweaked that. Um, got gotten better at doing my arm care. Um, I would probably call myself an arm care like Nazi because um, that's pretty much all I do is just well, short you're friends hair. friends with Jamie. What do you expect? You're, yeah. Yeah, Jamie there. Yeah. <laughs> just arm care, you know. Um, right. But, yeah, it's, I guess, not being able to play baseball and it kind of being taken away kind of helps you put things in perspective to to understand, like, you you don't always get what you want. And sometimes you got to dig a little bit deeper to, to get where you want. And I think that really, really, really helped me. I mean, I'm, nobody wants an injury, but, I mean – I believe that really, really helped me in my career to tighten things up and to just become a better overall pitcher. Yeah. Yeah, well, and it helps you realize, too, that it's his plan and, and not yeah. yours, um, which is which is important. I, I don't think enough people um, pay attention to those things in, in that manner, and I think we, we can all um, benefit from slowing down and, and um, putting our, our faith in, in the right places to uh, yeah. to get through difficult times. Um, so what have you been doing during the COVID? What, do you, what have you been doing? I know you're in Arizona. Isn't that what you, uh, we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier in Arizona? What are you doing out there, man? What's going on? Wake up every day at like 8, 30, 9 o'clock and go to the uh, park beside the Cubs complex and um, toss a little bit with a, with a few guys. Um, throw bullpens on Monday and Friday work out here at the uh, apartment gym we have. And, I mean, it's pretty much – I'm just treating it like a spring training, you know, besides all yeah. the, the PF – besides all the PFPs and the early, early waking up, you know. Um, right. <laughs> I mean, it's just pretty much just a spring training, but more hiking and hanging out with the, with the wife and just, you know, enjoying time, you know, without – yeah. having the stress of, I guess, baseball being on you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You getting any fishing in, any, anything like that? I tried fishing when I was rehabbing a few years ago. And not, not you. Not too good out here. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, too, not too good out here. I'm used, to, I'm used to the ponds that have a lot of fish, and you just throw it in right. there and you catch. But right, right. You gotta work just reel them in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're good, man. So, Jamie, what are, what are we expecting from uh, Grant here going forward? What, what I mean, I, I know I'm expecting a nice long major league career. I, I I'm expecting him to take that next step as you you know you were talking about. You know, let, well, actually, before we get to that, tell me one thing that somebody I guess people don't really know about him. Something that you've learned over the years, maybe a a nuance here or there. Tell me something interesting about Grant. Wow. Mm. That's, that's a tough one. That's, that's, that's the that, toughest that, question that, that I think I've ever somebody asked. On the, yeah, you put somebody on the spot there. I know. I, um, something. Grant, you better um, think of one of Jamie, too, because you got to come up with uh, Something they wouldn't. He used to, uh, what did he used to do with the, what did he used to do with the catcher where you put him like 10 feet away and throw the pee out of it and almost light him up? What didn't you oh, yeah, in, your, was, in, your, in your in your in your in your when you were doing your flat ground or something? What, and I was like, dude, was, you're killing somebody. He's like, they've caught it every time. I'm all right. That was my. Uh, <laughs> it was it was where I would turn around and kind of do like a yeah uh, like a backwards throw, pick my arm up and yeah, throw it that way. But you also yeah, it was like after your flat ground, right before you'd walk to the mounds, you'd like yeah. Do I mean you know he was he was a creature of habit that was. The thing for me is, you know, I've seen guys who go through routines and have routines, you know, even go to a point of superstition. With him, it would be almost like if he didn't do it, that he wouldn't be able to walk over to the mound 
and actually do anything at all. He'd have to go back. I mean, almost to the point where it was, you know, at the time for me, it was almost like it was OCD. Like something, right. you know, so it was a little <laughs> off kilter. But in reality, that's kind of what you got to do because that's sure. what was working for him at the time to prepare him to go perform. So, um, yeah, you know, as uh, as wild and crazy as his hair is and, and you know, that kind of stuff, He's got low OCD in him. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Yeah. I haven't asked. A, I haven't asked a tough question like that. So I'm just springing these guys. I'm yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks. I'm just you. Yeah. You, did, <laughs> you handled it great, man. You handled it great. Now it's Grant's turn. What's something that about Jamie that people don't know, or something that maybe you picked up about Jamie? Mm. I don't think that was enough time to think. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what my favorite word is? You remember that? Because y'all used to make fun of me of that all the time. I do. <laughs> you might have to say it. Might have to re, uh, refresh yeah. me. I think it's pissed. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you guys used to make fun of me all the time. I used it in every scenario you could use it in. I was happy Correct. and I'd go pissed. I was mad. I'd be like, yeah. You know, the kids died. I think your team was one of the teams that counted how many times I could say piss in one game. <laughs> Yep. I remember that. So I've been, I've been fortunate enough to have Jamie in my dugout a few times working with our pitchers. And and uh, he, I, I, the one I remember is him going to get a guy and he's like sitting down in the dugout and we're like, all right, you know, we need to go get him. And he just gets up and you know, puts his head down, piss, just walks out to the dugout. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, was, that was my go-to word. I, I use absolutely. it in lots of different, different contexts. You sometimes it, you was, do. it was joy. It was joy when I used piss. You know, it was one of those was it, that the surfers used to use dude that way, depending on which way I, mine was pissed. That's right. Well, good. So we've got, we've got an OCD, a guy and a, and a guy who doesn't curse at all that uses pips as his word. Yeah, that's, um, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now the softball, Jamie, now I'll toss the softball to you. Okay. Thank what you. are we expecting from Grant? What, what, I mean, I know, you know, MLB's next. I mean, where where do you how how good do you think he can be? You know, I I, I think he could be a guy that has a you know eight to twelve year career, you know, which is a phenomenal career. Um, but again, you know, a lot of that has to do with you know health, consistency, all the things that he talks about and knows about, um, right. and most of them he can control. There are some things that you can't control. Um, so, so hopefully, uh, the things he can control, he continues to control and get done. And then, uh, from there, it's going to be nice watching him get on the mound every fifth day, uh, on the MLB network highlights. Cause you know, he's a West coast guy. I ain't staying up that late to watch all That's those. That's right. Things. But when he's on the East coast, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll stay and watch him, you know, pitches every fifth day when he's on the East coast and, uh, stay up and watch those games. So, you know, I expect to see, you know, eight, 10, 12 year career out of him. Absolutely. I think that's, I think that's, uh, I think that's a great goal. I know Grant years are probably higher and that's awesome. But tell me, Grant, tell me about uh, just a couple more questions for you and I'll let you guys go. But Grant, tell me about uh, some of the older guys, you know, how have you been, um, you know, in, in AAA, you've got guys that have, that have some service time that are in, in, that are in AAA, you know, what kind of things are you learning from them? What kind of messages are they giving you trying to help you, you know, put more tools in your toolbox, you know, teaching you a little bit about the game. Do you have any of those you might be able to share with us? Um, I'm not really a one to, to like, ask any questions, but um, uh, I do like to watch a lot. Um, like, watch what they do and just, like, their their routines and their, like, I guess, mannerisms, like, what they do sure. with the ball, like, when, when they throw and, like, their – workouts and stuff like that um like last year i got the the chance to play with uh it was matt harvey um he was with the the aviators i mean you would not never think that that guy was as good as he was uh, without I, I guess humble he was um i i think i heard him speak maybe twice i mean wow. he's a quiet quiet guy um kept to himself but I guess he was he was one that was like, he's just trying to come back from like, trying to get back to where he was and just, I guess just to watch him 
try and get better and back to where he was 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 pretty special. Um, but yeah, I mean, to be 23 years old playing with Matt Harvey, I think he won how many Cy Youngs two two in a row or something like that. Yeah, two or one. Yeah, it's not I don't bad. Know. Yeah, however many. Um, it was it was really 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 cool. Yeah, I know. I know you're a quiet guy, so I know you pick up a lot. You're the, you know, you're not the the center of the uh, the locker room. You're the guy that sits on the sides and you observe everybody and you pick everything yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, neat. It's that very cool. I'm not the one to open up my mouth. No, no, no. You never have been. So that's the funny part. Um, you, you're still the same quiet guy, and I like it a lot. I, and you're gonna, you know, those are the guys that. Uh, that are always picking up all the details, you know, looking at, uh, at every angle. And, and I think that's probably why you have such a good plan and why you progress so well. Uh, and also too, you happen to throw the ball pretty darn hard with a lot of life. And, uh, that typically helps. A little bit. I don't, I, I can't really relate to that or your hair. So I think it's a great time for us to stop <laughs> because looking at that hair is incredible. And, and you know what, Grant, I, I can't stress it enough. You have been a huge catalyst for the Canes. You know, you may not realize it. You may not appreciate it because you're, you know, you're young and, and you're on your, your baseball journey. But, you know, as you step back, as you get older and, and you start looking back at this, we really want you to understand how big of a catalyst you are. You're super important to us. Um, we're proud of you, proud that you've worn our uniform because – you do everything the right way. You are, um, you're humble. You're, you're very grounded in your faith. You have a phenomenal family and you go out on the field and take care of your business. And, you know, as, as Jamie said, Jamie goes to bed maybe a little bit earlier than I, would, I do. So I will definitely be staying up and watching some West coast games. Um, because now I have a reason to, um, but, uh, you know what, man, and it, it's just awesome to get you on. And, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, with all this, this, this craziness happening in the world, um, you know, you have time to do it, which that's our, you know, that, that's, that's a, a blessing for us to be able to get you on here. But man, we really appreciate everything you've done for the Canes and, and, and everything you keep doing to represent your family. And uh, um, you're just an awesome guy. And we really appreciate you very much. I appreciate you guys. Jamie, thank you so much. As always, you're, you're, Sorry, Grant, you faded out there for a second, buddy. Go ahead. Am I here? Oh, I was. Okay, there you go. There you go. I was... Jamie, I will, I will throw it to you real quick. Um, you know, thank you so much, buddy. Um, I don't get to see you nearly as much as I used to. Um, I know you, you know, with family, with the young one running around the kitchen and all that, um, you, don't, you don't get as much time with the Canes, but uh, – Love to have you anytime, buddy. It's always great to get you on the on the horn. I uh, appreciate that. And, you know, not much longer. My my boys are six and three. I mean, uh, you know, we're getting we're getting closer to being back on that road and, and on the road again. And you know, it was a hundred percent my decision to get off the road because of my family. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, there isn't there isn't uh, a day that goes by that I don't miss my Kane's family when they're out on the road. I mean. Uh, you can – well, you, you've been witness to it. You'll be in the middle of the game, and I'll be texting. And, you know, come on, get that big hit and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, you know, once, once you're part of the Canes family, it's kind of in you, and you can't yeah. get it out of you. Um, so I'm just looking forward to being able to take the, the next journey with, uh, with my two boys, if they want to be baseball players. Please, Lord, please. Um, but, yeah. Yes. That's, uh, yes. That's, that's, that's the game plan, and, you know, uh, I miss I miss being out there with the camaraderie and the family, but uh, at the same time, it's good to be with my kids as well. Absolutely, totally understand. I'm you know fortunate my daughter's a little bit older, so yeah. uh, I have have a little bit of time to do that. As the guy who helps with recruiting, we're already watching your boys, man. We're already there. Um, oh, yeah. And Grant, whenever you and the wife happen to decide to have children down the road, if that's in your you know in, in his plan. We would love to have them in a cage uniform. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and if, yeah, even yeah. if they're girls and they want to throw, well, they could be the first girls to come through, you know? There we go. <laughs> but, Grant, man, you, you really are an awesome dude. And I know you, you had – might have been my audio or yours, but thank you so much, man. You're, you're an awesome dude. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Um, 
but uh, we really appreciate everything you've done for us and uh, continue to do for you, for, uh, you in, and in Oakland, man. Go, go crush it. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right, buddy. Take care. Gentlemen, thank you thank so much. And uh, I think we'll be on the phone again soon. Let's, let's get back on maybe Grant. Uh, hopefully, you know, as, as things go well and if there is a debut this year and, and things go well, I uh, would love to get you back on. And, and you, you've got a lot of people now, uh, a lot of young kids, because I don't know if you guys know, we have a lot of youth are watching these things. And uh, you've got a whole bunch of new fans, Grant. So make sure you, uh, you remember all those little guys when, they're, when you're out there, pal. Oh, I, 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 I need all right, to throw hey, out, I need to Jim, out Jim, yes. real quick. One, you, you know what I got to throw out, right? Okay. My Twitter handle is at Jamie Velo Evans. I do that every speech I give, so I thought I'd have to do it on the podcast. Too, every time. Or people may every be upset with me. Time. At <laughs> Jamie, J A M I E, Velo, V E L O Evans, E V A N S, at Jamie Velo Dude, Evans. I will put it in the show notes. Your Twitter okay. handle will be in the show notes. Oh, sorry. That's, Dude, that's become, that that's become coming. Coming. a little thing, huh? I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> Dude, you, you guys are awesome, man. Hey. Uh, be, please uh, be safe, um, take care of your families, and thank you for, for this blessing. You guys have been awesome, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Thanks, Rob. Absolutely. Have a blast. Thank man. you. See you, guys. Good seeing you, Grant. Good seeing you. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us today. Big shout out to Grant and Jamie for joining us. You can give Grant a follow on social media at gholmes underscore 14. And as Jamie said, you can give him a follow at Jamie Velo Evans. If you enjoyed this episode, do us a favor, like, comment, share, subscribe, and review us. Give us a follow on social media at Canecast Show. You can reach out to me personally on all social media channels at Rob Younce or email me directly at robyounce at gmail.com. I welcome your feedback as I look to improve this show every single episode. And until the next time, stay safe, wash your hands, and just keep smiling because baseball's right around the corner.